So these are the two bits that I'm using as reference for building this thing up. And this is the prototype piece that I've come up with. Now that I've got that one to work from, I can start producing a few more of them. I'm probably only going to produce about five or six of them that I'm going to have scattered around as part of the display. It's made up largely of a couple of different sizes of tube. The brass looking cap piece on the back there is really just a plaster nail. It's got a slight sort of cup to it with a little bit of texture on the inside. And I think that just sort of adds to the look of it. And it certainly looks close enough for what I'm trying to achieve with it. The spring loaded section is made from the inside piece of a stainless steel diner bolt. And all I've done with that is to cut it off to the appropriate length that I need and then screw on the nut piece and sand that down to a spacer so that it pushes against the spring. I've just used a hole saw to cut out the pieces for the bottom and then along with the nail I've just used some epoxy putty to backfill that so that it sits in the appropriate spot and it's all glued together really nice and tightly. I've got a couple of them made up now and I think they're looking pretty close to what I'm after and based on the one that's been done up on the lathe I think you can see they're a pretty close match. The only minor difference with them is because they're stock standard tube, these ones are 19.2 millimeters across, whereas this one is 19.9 millimeters across. But visually there, I think you can see there's not a hell of a lot of difference. This one is a little bit more stout, but even side by side there, if I was to start mixing them around, I think you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference between which is the bigger or the smaller. The other thing that I've done which is a bit different is to make up that one. And the difference with that one is that it's slightly cut away on one side. This is the one that I'll be putting on the inside of the pump action piece so that when it's racked you'll be able to see that in position and it sort of just adds to the illusion of the build. So the only thing that's been a little bit tricky with this is working out how to do the crimp section along with doing the folded over edge that holds the push button piece in place. The way I've been doing the crimping is by taking a piece of tube that has the right size for the outside diameter and then I mark the length that it needs to be what I do then is take that position and cut a groove line all the way around so that it forms a sort of a divot in the metal and then from there I'm using a long bolt that I've partially sanded flat on one side that lays in the divot and then I can hit across the top of it as I draw that bolt backwards that rolls the bar along as I'm doing it which imprints this crimp effect that I'm after. To stop the thing from collapsing whilst I'm doing that I've got a small mandrel piece similar to this sort of piece that goes into the centre there. It gives me something that I can hit against quite firmly without the pipe collapsing on the weight of each blow. Once I've done that I can slice that down the centre and that'll end up giving me two pieces that has the necessary crimping that I want on each of them. To get the folded section that holds the push button in place I've made up a small mandrel piece once again to go on the inside so that as I'm hammering on the tube it stops it from collapsing out of shape. This piece acts both as a support for the internal structure of it and as a measuring guide for how long I need it to be. And basically the tube itself needs to be longer than this piece by how much I want it to fold over by. Once that little mandrel piece is knocked down and it's just given a quick sand back, it's pretty close to finished. You can see that that hole's already pretty round but it's not quite big enough to accommodate the pin that we're going to be using. So from there I just use one of my deburring tools just to round that out a little bit more evenly and to make it ever so slightly larger to accommodate the pin. Apart from that, that's the two most complicated piece to sort it out and the rest is really just down to assembly. The other thing that's been quite useful in taking a break and working on these things is that it's taken my mind in a slightly different direction and the spring mechanism that I've worked out for this one has also led me to work out the spring release mechanism that I need for the extendable stock on the rifle itself. And with a slight modification of this design, I'll be able to include a similar sort of push button design to allow that extendable stock piece to snap into different positions. The final struggle that I've got to sort out is the actual end caps for them, these little red plastic caps. I have found a supplier for them, but they only sell them in packets of 100. So if there's anybody out there that knows anybody that sort of sells these little things in smaller quantities, I'd be happy to hear from you. But if worse comes to worse, if you can forgive the pun, I'll probably just bite the bullet and buy a packet of them anyway. But anyway guys, that'll be the update for this time. Thanks for watching. Talk to you next time.